Um, it's obviously not my printer, it's CDU's, and CDU is so lucky to have it as a world first, and I will explain a lot more about it as we go along. Uh, but first I want to introduce the topic, metal, metals in every part of our life. We have it in our phones, we have it in the buildings around us, but the technology used to make it is ancient. Uh, you're using casting style techniques to make things affordable for everyday use, and this casting is 4,000 to 6,000 years old. You make a shape, they call it a mold, that you then pour molten metal into and you let it cool. And this is how you get the shapes, and the only way you get it cheap enough to make it affordable for everyone is you make thousands and thousands of it. But essentially, a lot of things are moving to the digital age, but metal manufacturing has stayed put. Currently, the trend to move this into the digital age is 3D printing. And what that means is you're taking layer by layer and adding material to um, so they often call it additive magic, manufacturing, and so you make shapes out of it just by building up, rather than taking a big block of material and taking the material away. Uh, so what people commonly know is the plastic ones. Uh, there's some in people's garages now. They go and make little uh, fidgets or uh, iPhone covers that you put uh, in. Metal 3D manufacturing is also starting to become more and more used in some of the niche industries like aerospace and biomedical. And right now it's currently limited to very small shapes. So if you see that picture there, um, there's the size of the pin there. And this is typically what you have. You have very expensive materials such as titanium and very small intricate shapes that you can make, which makes a lot of things possible that weren't possible before. But this doesn't account for most uses of the metals that you see around you. Typical 3D metal printing uses technology where you put a powder layer down, you get a heat source, and you melt it layer by layer. And in between each layer, you have to wait for it to cool, and then you put another layer. So this makes it quite slow. It also uses expensive gases and other things. But you, you make, in the end, you can see on the right, you remove all the powder, and you got this part. And it has a lot of pores and it's not so strong because in between each of those layers, it can crumble. So where does the printer here on campus come in? It's a technology developed by Speed3D, a company with the co-founder, Stephen Camilleri, located right here in Darwin. They've made a machine that uses a different base technology to produce metal. metal. So I'm going to show you a video of it because seeing it is really believing how it works. So basically, uh, down at the bottom, you can see a nozzle. And in there, you just have metal powder, so copper powder that you feed through there. You heat it up to about 400 so you don't melt it. You have a lot of pressure behind it. And you're, you're shooting it through a jet engine, pretty much, speeding it up to three times the speed of sound. And the extremely clever part is that robot arm at the top. It's programmed to catch that metal in the right pattern in order to build these layers. And so cold spray has been around for about 20 years or 30 years. It's been found in the 80s by Russians. But they've never been able to unlock it to use three-dimensional shapes. And using this software, using this robot, being able to catch it like that, that has unlocked this technology for complex three-dimensional shapes. So what comes out of that robot is a part like this. This is a flywheel. It took about 11 minutes, 38 seconds to make. It weighs 230 grams. Um, doesn't seem so exciting, but this flywheel, if you used it, other 3D metal manufacturing techniques, would take about 38 hours to produce. So you can see how much faster that is. And that isn't even the fastest this machine can go. So what kind of parts does it produce? It makes common, solid, casting-style parts. So that, that large metal industry that you have, it can produce parts like that. Currently, we are limited to a space about the size of a ruler, but this machine is not limited in the future to that. So it can expand. And right now, as you can see in the photo there, that's what we've printed in a day and a half with the, with the machine. Just, you get a file, 
a digital file, you put it in, you make a toolpath, and you can come up with shapes. So there's so many uses of this technology that we want to explore. And so this technology, it combines the advantages of three different technologies. So you have cold spray, it's the base technology. Um, it makes a very strong material and it's very fast because it doesn't have to be melted. It combines 3D printing because it has a streamlined interface, simplified production sequence, and flexibility of how many you want. If you want one or you want ten, you can produce them that day. And it also, importantly, combines with casting because you get low cost, you get fast, a hundred to a thousand times faster. And this combination can shorten manufacturing lead times, reduce cost, and enable rapid pro product design iterations. And this is the truly exciting part. It's right here on campus. So what we're doing with it is we've made uh, this place called the Advanced Manufacturing Alliance. It's a very strong partnership between Charles Darwin University and Speed. I work with Stephen every day very closely, and we're looking to promote this. And what we're trying to do is get industry collaboration get projects from big mining companies, oil and gas, from everyday local areas, remote housing, and then go and partner with trades to look at standards and procedures and get these processes and make sure the material is strong enough to be used in all the applications that we need to use it for. And then go to academic research, materials research, business and economics. This, this is such a, a base technology that it can expand into so many other things. Uh, we've been fortunate enough to get a lot of funding from the NT government to get the machine here. We've had uh, a CRCP that's been announced uh, for $1.5 million to get the project started. And what we are looking to do, our goals are to develop real world applications, to work with the industry, to work with trades, to get ideas from people around. You have to have the right people, the right places. And just cr then create those procedures. And then one of the other things is, right now it works in copper and aluminium, but we want to transfer this and go into steels, stainless steel, and then into higher wearing steers eventually. So what are we looking to get? We want to build solutions together. So if you have ideas of applications, want to come and see the machine, please contact me. I uh, want to show it to you. It's right next door. I can take you any time, so please contact me if you have any ideas, come talk to me afterwards. We want your ideas, we want your pain points, and we want to help solve them with you.